Welcome to the Master Magnet's Middle Processing Laboratory in Redditch in the UK. This is a, one of a series of uh, articles we're going to do about the different unit processes used in mineral processing. And today's uh, unit process is the induced roll magnetic separator, which you can see running here. The unit is essentially a, uh, an electro coil, copper coil, air cooled, which generates a, a magnetic field. Uh, there is one pole here, and there is another adjustable pole here. And the, the roll that is revolving in the video now is in the center of that magnetic field. And the magnetic, as the name says, the magnetic force is induced onto that roll. Uh, it's, it must be stressed that um, the machine is infinitely adjustable in the fact that you can move this particular pole in and out to cope with different particle size material. And as it's an electro coil, then you can adjust it uh, from zero to, to practically 2.2 uh, Tesla or 22,000 Gauss on the surface of the roll. It's important not to get obsessive about the magnetic field strength because in mineral separation, there are two things that are important to you. There is the magnetic field strength, but also the field gradient. And it's a combination of those two things that give you separation performance. And in the induced roll magnetic separator, the field gradient is generated by, hopefully you can see on the roll, a, ser uh, a series of laminations which are castellated up and down, which gives you uh, a peak of magnetic field at the edges. And that attracts our paramagnetic particles to those edges, which means that they are their, their flow, instead of coming off under normal centrifugal force, they will be influenced to come round the other side of the splitter plate here and be separated into a separate chute. Today we're separating uh, a, a glass sand, uh, uh, a silica sand which has contamination of uh, 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 various minerals that are paramagnetic. For example, it will contain iron oxide hematite, it will contain tourmaline, and it will also contain biotite mica, all of which will appear on the video as black or red mineral material. They all have certain magnetic properties that allow you to separate it out on the induced roll separator. The silica uh, sand itself um, is non-magnetic or diamagnetic and will just fall off the roll under the centrifugal force imparted by the roll's revolution. It's also important to stress that the revolution speed of the roll is variable as well. Typically we run them on an industrial plant between 80 RPM and 150 RPM. Standard in the laboratory, which is what is, we tend to run at a starting point of 100 RPM and then adjust all the other variables around it to get the optimum separation. We also come down and get a lateral shot against the black background. You should be able to pick up the We run about uh, 300, key, uh, 300 grams through of, of material. We set the machine up to give us a magnetic and a non-magnetic product. The non-mags will come out of this chute, the magnetics will come out of this chute. We also have the capability to take a middlings product as well on these units, which can be recycled either way and gives you extra process flexibility. It should also be said that these units in industry are often run in series where we have a second roll below this one and we can give a material two passes um, uh, to get more magnetic material out of it. Um, and we can run that off the same coil. So we have our non-magnetic material, which has had some, some of the uh, iron containing minerals removed from it. Uh, and then we have our magnetic fraction, which hopefully you can see in here, which is a lot darker and has uh, a little bit of carryover of good material in it. It's fair to say that that could be particles that are not completely liberated. It could be silica sand that has some iron coating on the surface of it, also inclusions of magnetic mineral as well. But these, the, the, one of the great advantages of the induced roll separator is the fact that it doesn't carry over much very fine material. Typical operating size ranges for this unit would be, in my opinion, somewhere between two millimeters 
down to 45 microns. That's significantly finer material at the bottom end than you can get on over a conventional sort of master roll or rare earth roll because there's much less electrical charge or electrical pickup of fine particles on this particular roll because it's nice in the earth uh, and things. So it gives you a good product size range uh, capability to process dry. Obviously, if we're going below 45 microns, then we need to start thinking about wet magnetic separation as a process to keep the particles dispersed. Other process advantages of this machine are that it's infinitely variable between roll speed, hole position, and current to the roll. It means that we can tailor the magnetic field intensity and force that we're getting on the roll to the individual minerals within the specific deposit that we're processing it. It's also capable of taking uh, material that's been heated. We need a dry feed for this process. It's essential that it's, it's dry, but sometimes material is going to come at temperatures of 100 degrees centigrade and above. Um, that's not a problem to process on this particular type of unit. We ran some tests a couple of weeks ago on material at 20 degrees and 100 degrees and got the same performance out of it and same separation efficiencies out of it. So it's quite flexible if you are taking it from a heater onto this unit, it, it, it doesn't have an issue with degradation of the magnetic performance due to permanent magnets being present. Typically, uh, customers will want to do significantly higher throughputs. So we make these units up to a meter in width. Uh, and typically a, a meter width unit, depending on the mineral application that you're doing, would do somewhere between two and four tons per hour of material. Uh, Typical applications for these materials are, like we're doing here, silica sand, removal of iron contamination for glass making processes, but also felspars, nephthalene cyanates, uh, and materials like that can all be processed through here. It's also used for ilmenite concentration from beach sands, you can get a very nice ilmenite uh, concentrate out of it and, and separate it from the silica and the garnets and other materials. Um, Abrasive materials uh, as well, removal of iron minerals from abrasives. It, there are a number of applications where we've sold units for that type of material. And also tungsten separation, uh, wolframite separation from cassiterite ore. It can be used as a primary processor before we might go to disc separators for a secondary concentration up from that point. And we'll talk about disc separators uh, in another uh, of these uh, articles. Okay. I should stress that there's no such thing as the best magnetic separator uh, per se. It's much more about having the best magnetic separator for your specific application. Um, and hence, that's why we have a laboratory test facility at Redditch in the UK. We can do uh, test runs, send you the samples back. We can also do X-ray fluorescence and X-ray diffraction testing on the material as we go along to ensure that we can meet uh, the specifications that you have uh, outlined in your request. It allows us to monitor a test as we go, change the operating variables, for example, turn the uh, splitter plate to a certain position and do a different cut, and it allows you to, ca to calculate the grades and recoveries that you require for your particular process. So if you are interested in having some test work done, then, uh, then, then please contact us. We'll be delighted to look at it for you.